hello and welcome back to this channel so in today's tutorial we're gonna learn how to do this 3d lettering in adobe fresco so if you want to support this channel you can always buy me a coffee at coffee.com you can find the link to do that in the description box below if you create something using one of my tutorials don't forget to tag me on instagram with at print me some color or at thing beyond color i would love to check it out okay so let's just get started then i'm going to click on create new go to print and click on small postcard i have a color palette for you guys so if you want this color palette go ahead and click on the link in the description box below to download it once you have downloaded it it gets saved to your photos or images let's go ahead and bring in the color palette to do that all you have to do is click on your images go to photos and bring the image in click on done now i'm going to go ahead and pick these colors for that you should be in one of these three brushes and not some other tool it doesn't matter which brush you're on click and hold to select that color let's do the same for all these colors once you're done click on the i button let's hide the color palette as well now you have your all your colors under recents so let's just start lettering so click on a new layer and for this lettering we're going to use the vector brush that is vector basic round i'm going to make a slight modification to this brush that is click on the settings here and go ahead and turn off pressure dynamics what this does is now if you draw something it's going to be of equal thickness doesn't matter how much pressure you're adding okay i'm going to click and hold and set the brush size to about 95.5 or 96 it doesn't matter ignore the comma i'm in germany so decimal point is noted as comma and not dot so just ignore that okay so let's go ahead and start lettering first for this i'm going to go ahead and choose my uh, one of my colors that is this one here that is 31 49 and 98 and i'm going to make a simple hair hey. hey. and make sure there's enough space between the alphabets and then hey i'm gonna make it a bit further away all right i think that looks fine you can actually click on transform tool and bring it down a little bit and i think it's selecting something else i'm gonna go ahead and see what it is so select so there's some rogue stroke here so i'm going to go into my eraser tool and make sure it's at a very big size and do this until i can see that it's delete it off in that layer it's still there ah now it's gone okay so now let's go ahead and click and duplicate this layer and what we're going to do now is actually bring this layer as a shadow to do that go ahead and select this darker color so i'm going to select this 40 90 and 96 then i'll go into the layer below that and then fill 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 I know you can't see this but if you hide this you'll see that you have changed the color let's go back to that layer with the darker yellow or orange or whatever this color is click on your transform tool i'm going to bring it down a bit like this and once you're happy click on done now we'll go ahead and click on a vector brush and then we're going to reduce this size to as tiny as possible even tinier should be okay but i like to make it even more tiny so that you have much more control over it okay and once you have that we're going to go ahead and fix these edges now so my angle would be like this so i want you to draw in that direction that is i'm going to go ahead and draw something like this and fill this in i'll do the same here and here as well by the way, you'll be drawing this on the layer with the darker orange, okay? Just join these edges like that.
Once you're done, it will look something like this and this is exactly what we want. But we need to add some shadows to it so that it really looks like 3D, right? So make sure you're on that dark orange layer, click on a new layer and click on the clipping mask because we're going to make modifications but only on this dark orange layer, okay? So click and let's go ahead and choose this darkest dark we have. It's 40, 95 and 86. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add some shadows to this. So my shadows are again are gonna be in this direction. So I'm going to go ahead and choose everywhere where there is going to be that like that. And I'm just going to color this in. And don't worry about going out because you're on a clipping mask. So it will make sure that you're contained within that color or layer. That looks nice. And now I want the same thing here. So I'm going to go ahead and add some shadow here like this. And let's do that here as well. That's a bit too down over there, I guess. Yeah, maybe a little bit above like this. That should be okay. Let's do the same thing here. This goes all the way till here. This comes as well and this as well. And obviously in here and in here. You can add these shadows to any direction you want, by the way. It's not necessary that you have to add it in this particular direction. But make sure that all the alphabets have it in the same direction. That is really, really important. Otherwise, it'll look really weird though. Okay, and then over here. Let's make this line join this. And then here. This actually comes all the way. This also comes all the way. Okay, that looks a little 3D already, right? So let's go ahead and add some bits to inside of this one. Okay, so I'm going to go on top of this hay layer, click on a new layer and uh, let's keep it at six, I guess. Let's see. Okay, that looks fine, actually. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose the lightest color that I have. That is this one, that's 39, 12, and 10. I'm gonna go ahead and draw a line like this. So this thickness really depends on your choice. So I'm maybe making it eight. That should look good, actually. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a line like that over here as well and join these two. And I'll do the same here. Okay, I'll go to my eraser tool and reduce this eraser. Uh, let me check. Okay, a little more, maybe 10 or 12, something like that. You can also click and hold for eraser to do that. So let me make it 10. Okay, 10 looks good. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and erase it like this so that, you know, it's bits and pieces like this. You can do it individually like this. Or you can also actually go and draw a line together. Oh, what happened here? Let's go back and draw this. All right. So that looks good, but we are not done yet. So we're going to click and duplicate this layer because we want a little bit of shadow for that as well. But we need a darker color. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this color, which is the darker color here. So that one right there. And uh, now we have to color these things in that color. So to color this, there's a very easy method. You can click on a new layer, click on clipping mask. And now go to your fill tool and just click and click with a vector fill by the way and then it automatically colors it so now i want this lighter layer on top so i'm going to click until this gets selected and bring it on top and now i'll go to this layer here that is which has the darker color by the way click on the transform tool and i want it a little bit down so you can use these buttons right here and to the right 
to make it look like this and click on done once you're done and you can see that you have created a little bit of an 3d effect over there right so now let's go ahead and make some background for this so i'm going to go back all the way down to where my background layer is click on a new layer now let's go ahead and choose this lightest color that we have and i'm going to go into my vector brush and uh, obviously make a comment bubble that is just like this and like that and fill it in now we'll duplicate this one and go back to the layer in the bottom select the darker yellow that you have by the way and fill that layer and use transform tool and bring it back a little bit so that there is some kind of a shadow happening and once you're done click on done now let's go back to the bottom most layer click on new layer and let's give this some color so i'm going to click on that and i'm going to give this bright orange that we have and vector fill that looks good let's add some elements now okay click on a new layer and let's go ahead and choose this lighter color that we have and oops go to your vector brush i'm going to increase this a little bit and i'm going to make some flowers just like that oh i choose and i'll fill this in i don't like that color it's too too light so i'm going to undo that and uh, make this second lighter color again vector brush and make some flowers okay and let's fill it in and then let's choose the darker color that we have go back to your colors and then maybe color it in like this i'm gonna make a flower here like that with this color it's okay okay and i'm going to go into my vector brush reduce the size to about 7.5 or something and make some swirls like this maybe a bit behind this and then choose the lighter color a bit darker color maybe doesn't matter just choose some colors okay that looks good and we are done with our illustration so that brings us to the end of this tutorial and i hope you had fun and learned something new on how to create easy super easy 3d lettering in adobe fresco if you like this tutorial please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell okay i guess i'll see you in the next video then bye bye